Hi, it's Jacob here at Tea Creek with George. Hello. We're going to learn how to operate a backhoe today. This backhoe is a John Deere 350C. It's quite an old machine, but it's a great machine to learn on. We're going to start with pre-operation inspection, uh, inspection from the seat, and then we're going to learn how to run the backhoe. So it's going to be, we're going to have a fun time. So the first step before you get on any machine, whether it's a tractor, or ATV, uh, excavator, any machine at all, you always need to do what's called your pre-operation inspection. We covered some of this in a video on the Kubota. Um, so we'll just do it quickly. I wanna show you what you check on this machine. First one from where I'm standing is gonna be the hydraulic oil level. Um, you'll notice as you operate the machine, this level will rise and fall depending on where your booms are. Um, with everything down, it should be basically over the full line. So that's good. Uh, the next thing we're gonna check as we move along all of these grease zerks or grease nipples you want to make sure that all your moving parts are freshly greased and ready for the day uh, we don't have to do that this time because i just did that on the machine at the end of the last time i operated it if i didn't know that you'd always have one of these guys a grease gun and you'd be going around and checking each of your fittings here and making sure that it's, it's freshly greased uh, same thing with the uh, uh, front of, uh, of the loader. We've got a lot of pins here, a lot of grease fittings that all would need to have grease at least every five to 10 hours. Okay, the next one that we're gonna check is your motor oil. Really important because you never know when you, your oil pan might get damaged or something comes loose and you might be losing oil. And we can see that our oil level is good. Okay. That's oil. Let's go around to the other side, George. Okay, on this side, we're just checking the same same things, our, our grease fittings. Um, you've got your main hub here that is, is filled with grease instead of oil. You've got an idler wheel there that is greased. And then you have your track tensioner there. And that's it. Those are your, those are your grease uh, nipples on this track side of the track. Nice. Okay, what I'm gonna do here, which is really quick, you want to use a straight board and you want to see what your distance is between this edge and the lowest part of your 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 track sag here you don't want this more than a couple inches and you don't want it less than three quarters of an inch okay so you want it somewhere in between there once you've operated this particular machine you'll get a pretty good feel for it kind of like when you run a chainsaw and you're checking your chainsaw your chain tension it's the same thing here okay the last thing Part of this machine, uh, there's a uh, gear oil check there and uh, rear differential oil check here. Um, I checked both of those already and they're good. Um, uh, we've got our battery compartment here. Okay, now we are gonna be using the backhoe today. So it's really important to check all of your fittings on your, on your excavator arm, on your backhoe, and there are a lot of them, okay. Now again, I already kind of cheated and went ahead and, and pre-greased everything, but I just want to, how do you know where to find a, a grease fitting on an machi old machine like this, or just about any machine, is you look for where it moves. Any part that moves at all is going to have uh, a grease fitting. All right. So one example, this is a bit of a tricky one, it's mm -hmm. a good example, is this hydraulic block here, this ram. It doesn't look like it moves, but it does. It has to pivot in order for the um, boom to go left, right, left, right. Uh -huh. And there's a fitting right there. And the grease actually comes out the bottom here. All right. right, because there's there's a what's called a pin that goes right through the, the, the middle and it has to stay greased, okay? Same thing here, this, this piece here has to move, uh -huh. right? It has to be able to go like this as you move your, your excavator arm. And you can see there's one, two, three fittings just for that one moving piece. Wow. So there's going to be three on the other side. If you're, you find them on this side, it's going to be mirrored on the other side. Okay, you can see there's a fitting here for this moving piece. You can see there's a fitting down here for this moving piece. Yeah. Right? Uh, and as you move up your, your backhoe, this, this, this here is going to have a, a grease fitting. Uh -huh. uh, this pin down here is going to have a grease fitting. It's this one here. You see this grease line here? Yes. The fitting's here, but this grease line actually goes down and greases this. Mm. 
pin down here. So that's something to pay attention to is look look and see if the machine uh, has has those lines and make sure you find them for every single moving part of your machine that you're going to be using or have used. So there's two different greasing intervals. One is before you operate, mm -hmm. the other is after. Some operators prefer to do it before, mm -hmm. some prefer to do it after. You just got to choose which one you are and do it every single time. I, I find myself, I do it when I'm done with a piece of equipment, once yeah. I'm done with it, like a chainsaw or a tractor or whatever, yeah. I find that after I'm done, I want to present it to the next person so it's good to go. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's my preferred way to do it as mm -hmm. well. Nonetheless, I do check it because I'm not the only person that operates. Uh, so it's important. If you're not the only operator, you got to check it every single time before you operate. Because a previous right. operator might have made a mistake or not taken care of it or done something improper. Mm -hmm. uh, this part here mm -hmm. has broken and come off this multiple times. This is a brand new one we just put in this washer and this cotter pin. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want to go around and make sure that all those pieces are on your machine before you run it. Because it can be a devastating error if you operate and something breaks and comes apart right in the middle of your operation. So, yes. so you're not just checking your grease, you're also checking all your pins, your nuts and bolts, um, making sure they're on here. One more thing to check with this really old machine are your frame bolts. So this is a, um, a known issue with this particular industrial tractor, mm -hmm. it's called. Uh, these frame bolts, you'll see they're brand new in here. Um, they tend to rattle out as you operate. And some of them are obvious, like these two here. Some of them are less obvious, like there's two inside here. So a good idea is to go along and put your fingers in and just feel and make sure they're all the way in. All right. Yeah. Um, and you want to do that as part of your pre-operation inspection on this particular machine. So that kind of wraps up uh, the pre-operation inspection on this um, tracked backhoe, the John Deere 350C, that we call the Snort. Uh, are there any questions? So the question is the greasing interval. Uh, it's, it's roughly the same. Um, the good habit is to grease it before or after every operation. The reason why is a Kubota is a light duty uh, tractor. Um, this is a heavy duty industrial machine. The difference is, is how much you use your, your, your front end or your back end. Uh, this is designed to basically go all day long nonstop, right? Whereas the Kubota is kind of designed to be intermittently used. Sometimes you're scooping with it, other times you're just, you're towing implements in the back. So what I've, um, the professional operators I know, um, they grease it every operation. Yeah. You're basically feeling the resistance of the grease, or you're paying attention to your fitting, and as soon as you see grease starting to come out, then you stop. So you don't necessarily have to over-grease it. You just want to make sure there's enough grease in there that it's always lubricated. What you don't want to have happen is you don't want to uh, have it be metal on metal and you don't want to be taking these apart and replacing these things. Because like one of these hydraulic arms is like thousands of dollars, right? Um, so yeah, it's much cheaper to put grease in it than to fix it, as I've learned. <laughs> so we're done the pre-inspection, it's time to operate. So I'm wondering what side of the tractor do I get on? So that's a great question. Um, most machines you're going to get on the left side. Right. Just like our regular vehicles, the uh, driver's side is the left side. Um, the reason is, is that you've got your loader control typically on your right hand side. George, which controls do you recognize? So George has operated our tractor before, our Kubota. Yep. Um, and I'm just curious which controls you recognize from the Kubota well, operation. This is the clutch. Exactly. My left foot is the clutch. You got it. My right foot is the brake. You got it, 100%. Uh, this here is to control my blade, my you front. You got it. Front. What do you call it? I guess it's, it's your loader. Loader. Yeah. This is to, my loader. These are to control, um, although I've never seen them before, I'm guessing they're to control the tracks. You got it. Uh, right side, left side. Yep. Here's your, here's your shifter. Yep. Right now neutral. 
Yes. First, forward, second, third, fourth. You got it. This here, this is different to me. What is this? Okay, so that is actually, you've got a control just like that on the Kubota, uh -huh. also on your left side. Uh -huh. And what does it do? So that's your, your forward and back. Okay. Just like on the Kub Kubota, All right. right? So you got your, your, your low, low, reverse, high, on the Kubota in the same spot. All right. Yep. And then what about your throttle? Where's your throttle? There uh, you right go. Here. You got it. Also similar spot as the Kubota because the Kubota, the throttle's right kind of behind the steering wheel on the right side. Yeah. This one is basically the same spot and All it's right. the same style of throttle, right? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So those are the main controls. Now this is what's called a keyless backhoe, meaning you don't need a key to start it. And believe it or not, a lot of modern backhoes are also keyless. Mm -hmm. They're just you don't have a key you just push a button to start it so on this one uh, you have to flick the switch down to start mm -hmm. and push the start button um, and with this one we also have to make sure the battery's on which it is um, and then uh, we can start it up all right so we worked on the main controls identifying all the main controls now we're going to work on the backo controls all right um, so to do that i'm actually we're going to drop the seat and get you to go up on it and sit right. there and then we'll identify each control okay one thing that this old machine's missing is the cheat sheet that you'll usually see by your controls telling you what each one does mm -hmm. um, so i'm just going to describe to you what they do and i'm going to start it up and i'm going to let you try it Nice. Sound right. good? Sounds great. Okay, so um, first ones are these little ones on the side. They're your um, stabilizer feet that drop down. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, and that's all these are. That, that's all they do. Then your big ones, um, they operate your booms, okay? Right. So one's going to operate your main boom. Mm -hmm. The next one's going to operate your arm here. And uh, you've, your main boom control is usually on this machine. Uh, this style of older machine is gonna be attached to your left and right. So you'll raise and lower it and swing it left and right. And then your other one's gonna be attached to this one. It's gonna push it in and out. And then left and right is gonna curl your bucket, okay. open and close your bucket, okay? So this is your procedure. If you're operating, you start by making sure your front loader is down mm -hmm. and on the ground mm -hmm. uh, for stability mm -hmm. and counterweight. Then you're gonna drop these arms just enough so you start feeling the machine lift just a tiny bit. That just means you got enough pressure on your stabilizer arms. Mm -hmm. Th then and only then do you work on your, uh, on your backhoe, your excavator arm, okay? Yes. Rule number one, you always use your strongest part of your arm first for the hardest stuff. Mm -hmm. Never use your small rams, your hydraulic arms, for anything difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really, really important. So your strongest ram here, you can tell, is this one. It's the beefiest, and it's this, this main part right here, yeah. okay? So a lot of people, when they get on, they think that your digging is done with your bucket mm -hmm. right here. It's actually not. Your bucket is just for scooping and dumping. The weakest uh, rams, the weakest part, is your left and right. You're, you're swinging left to right. Mm -hmm. Never, ever, ever use that to hit anything or try and move anything. It is, the, it, it is the weakest and it is one of the biggest, most expensive mistakes that uh, new operators will make with some of these uh, arms is they'll think, hey, I can move this left and right. I can, you know, bash this pile of gravel and use and push it over or something. That will bend your backhoe arm. So I have a question for Jacob regarding the hydraulic, the hydraulics. I'm wondering, uh, having the machine shut down and the hydraulics engaged like this, is that a stress on the uh, machinery or the hydraulic system? Yeah, that's a great question. The, uh, the short answer is, yeah, absolutely it is. So uh, when you're done with the machine, you want to basically relax all your hydraulics mm -hmm. um, so that you're not putting pressure on your, on your valves in the hydraulic system. Um, there's a couple ways you can do that with the backhoe, the excavator arm. One, there's a um, hole here that you can put through a, a, a lock, like a pin, all right, yeah. like a, a hitch pin type pin, and that will hold it up. In, and then what you do 
is after it's turned off, you basically, just like on the, you learned on the tractor, you let all the pressure out of all your hydraulic controls mm -hmm. and it can just relax. And then if you've got a pin in here, the pin will hold it up instead of the hydraulic system. Keep going. Good, okay, now you're bucket out. Yep, you got it. Good. Okay, right hand push away from you. Okay, left hand again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So yeah, so this is the this is a really important part of the lesson here, is that this is the strongest position that this backhoe is in right now that your excavator is in. Wow. It is the strongest it's ever going to be. You know why? Why? Because your rams are in. Remember, it's just like with the loader, um, when your rams are extended, it's your yeah. most fragile. Okay. Okay? When they're in like this, it's, it's the strongest. Um, the main thing you want to do is you want to make sure that this bucket piece here is like this. Right? That it's, it's uh, in line with this arm. Yeah. That this ram is, is uh, contracted. Yeah. Because this is makes the bucket the strongest position for digging. So if you're going to get into some dirt or start making a deep hole or something like that, you actually want to do most of your digging with your bucket like this. All right. Right? So your order would be basically pull this arm a little bit to get the teeth to dig, pull this arm to dig some more, and then you get kind of do both. Okay, get it, yeah. And what you're doing is you're pulling that dirt towards you and then once you've got a full bucket load built up then you curl all right and scoop it up all and right. then you lift it up and move it where you want and let it go I'm sorry, so it. i'm just saying this is a really important part of the lesson because it's a big mistake a lot of people do is they'll get let's say this is going to be a digging position this is not a great digging position it's just mm -hmm. for demonstration but they'll want to try and dig with this which is fine if you're in something really loose and it's not going to really damage it. Yeah. But um, it can be a problem if you're working it really hard. Um, this, uh, especially if the machine's smaller or lighter duty, um, you can uh, you can cause some damage to your to your bucket. So but as long as that that's locked in, say um, say if I was going to do the road here right now, I'd literally I'd just be I pull this to get the big guy moving. It would start scraping, and then when I stop, then I do that little curl. Yeah, that what works. happens, so it's a bit tricky here. It's a great question. So what, what's happening here is we're, you're, you're starting your dig. Yeah. And you'd have to use this arm here to get started. Yeah. But every time you're doing a major pull, you'd want to be using this one to kind of pull it up. Yeah. Uh, if you follow these rules where you're basically working from your strongest ram down to your weakest when you're operating, that's you start with your strongest down to your weakest, and you avoid using your left right sw boom swing mm -hmm. um, for anything other than just moving your material then you're going to keep your excavator um, nice and healthy and uh, undamaged nice yeah okay so we're done the basic operational introduction to the john deere 350c otherwise known as the snort here at tea creek uh, how was that for you george it was amazing for the first time there's a lot there's a lot to uh, take in, but um, Jacob's such a wonderful teacher. I, what I grabbed from it is uh, be patient, um, do your checks. Uh, it's an expensive piece of equipment. Maintain it well. It'll, it'll take care of you for years and years. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, if you like that video and what we're doing here at Tea Creek, consider signing up for our land-based Indigenous-led training. Uh, you can visit us on online, tcreek.ca, and check out more of what we're doing here. Thanks for joining us.